It started on a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday like any other Tuesday. I had a hangover. I had about four hours sleep and my mouth tasted like... You know how my mouth tasted. All of this was normal, except the weather. Some days it rained. But the mouth was the same. So was the four hours sleep. So was the hangover. Can I help you, sir? I'm Joe Harris, honey. I work here. Excuse me, Mr. Harris. I just started here this morning. I'll have to start getting familiar with the talent on the station. I'd enjoy that. Hello. Mr. Moore wanted to know as soon as Mr. Harris got back. He just came in. Hi, Sexy. Thank you. Sid Moore's been on the phone all morning. He saw about your play review last night. Isn't that too bad? He said he saw the play last night, too, and he thinks you were unnecessarily rough on it. Gee, that's too bad. You're real clever this morning. Dear Joe Harris, I listen to your program every night. What an exciting life you must lead. All the theatrical openings, all the parties. One minute sitting at ringside for a championship fight, the next racing across town to cover a fire or a murder. I don't usually write fan letters, but... But I just had to let you know how much I enjoy listening to you. Signed? One of your faithful listeners. You read it. I wrote it. You want me to get Sid Moore for you? You bet I do. I'm going to give him an earful today. Same old thing? Same old thing. I used to be a reporter, remember? I used to be able to sink my teeth into a story. That's how I made my name in this town, carting a mini tape around to hospital wards and night court, to fires and murders. Now what do I do? Nightclub gossip, chit chat, no controversy. It's an election year. You ever hear anything so stupid in your life? I'm a reporter, but I can't be controversial because it's an election year. A man with my ratings would walk into NBC. Where have you been? What? A man with his rating could you walk. You find a minute tape seat. and get it loaded. We gotta get out of here. What are you talking about? Gordon sent a car waiting downstairs. I got two reservations on the next plane to Hartford. Hartford? Yeah, I told that jerk. I told him, but no, he had to make like Barney Oldfield. Who? Herb Fuller. He plowed that fancy souped up jalopy of his right into a railroad embankment outside of Hartford. Is he dead? Not yet. They've got him in the hospital. But when he comes to, I want you there with that recorder. If he dies, we may have to do a memorial show on him. Now, you've been wanting to make like a reporter. Now's your chance. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay, take it easy, will you? Dr. O'Connor. Mr. Moore. How do you do? Mr. Harris. Harris, doctor. You were a close personal friend of Mr. Fuller's as well as a business associate, weren't you? Yes. Please sit down. Would you care to contact his wife, or would you want us to do it? He's dead? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you knew. Yes, he died a little less than an hour ago. Frankly, Mr. Moore, he didn't have a chance. It's a miracle that he was still alive when they got him here. I don't think there was a bone in his body that wasn't broken. I hope you won't misunderstand what I'm about to say, Doctor. Herb Fuller was more than a business associate. We both feel a keen sense of personal loss. And I'm sure that every American who ever laughed at him or chuckled with him or was moved by his simple humanity will have lost a great friend today. Well, I suppose you might say that, Mr. Moore. The amalgamated broadcasting system will want to do a memorial show on Herb, coast to coast, a tribute to a great man. And uh, Mr. Harris here, who was privileged to know Herb better than most of us, will narrate it. Yes, sir. I want to talk to the state trooper, the ambulance driver, the nurse, everybody who had anything at all to do with the accident. See, Doctor, what we want to ask you is this. Uh, could you tell us if there were any final words? Did he say anything before he passed on? Oh, now, don't let that microphone frighten you, Doctor. If it isn't right the first time, we can always do it over again. And what you do say will be heard, coast to coast. Well, it isn't really that, Mr. Moore. It's just that I don't think you'd be interested in what he had to say. Well, now, Doctor, don't you think we should be the judge of that? All right. It was just before we gave him the transfusion. He was mumbling. He kept trying to say something, so I leaned over. Then, just before he died, he said one word. What was it? He said... Well, I don't think you can put it on a memorial broadcast coast to coast, Mr. Moore. Doctor, please. Do you ever read fences or the walls in public places, Mr. Moore? What? 
Yes, well, it was one of those words. He used it several times. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. Let's go. I found him. He was a small timer, a nothing, working on a 200 watt station outside of Boston. I brought him down to New York. I shoved him down their throats. I wet nursed him, I bottle fed him. I created him. Out of a two bit station in Worcester, Mass., I created him. When the payoff came, they benched me. Well, I'm back in the lineup now. Maybe finally I'll make it big on Mr. Fuller. How? How? He had a pot full of radio and TV shows, right? Right. Well, all those shows are going to be up for grabs. Somebody's going to have to do them. Maybe you. Why do you think I had you take that tape recorder and microphone along? To record the sound of the splash as you siphoned out the last drop of the great man's blood. No smoking, please. We'll be landing in a few minutes. I had Gordon notify all the newspapers about our little journey, so there'll probably be some newspaper reporters at the airport. So you keep your trap shut. Put a solemn look on your kisser and curb your natural instinct to smile in their lenses. We came to Berry season, not to laugh at it. Listen, him. wise guy, listen. Will you just stop being smart for a minute and listen to old Coach Sid? You have just become official chief mourner, grief-stricken intimate pal, and maybe even Paul Bear for your good, true, and intimate friend, Herb Fuller. You know how intimate Herb Fuller and I were? I used to deliver his mail when I was the fastest mailboy amalgamated ever had. Yeah, well, from now on, he's the best friend you ever had in the whole world. He was the first one to put you on radio, and you're not ashamed to wear that black silk band on your arm in his memory. The black silk comes off the expense account? You play it right, and I'll up the ante into the stratosphere. Only a few hours ago. And so I packed up my recorder and caught a plane back to New York, leaving behind in a sterile, white-tiled morgue in Hartford, Connecticut, the mortal remains of a man I knew, admired, respected, and sure, I'm not ashamed to say it, loved. As you knew, admired, respected, and loved him. A big story, the death of Herb Fuller. A big story, and the saddest story I ever covered. Good night. How was it? As a broadcast or as a human document? Both. Well, as a broadcast, it was great. As a human document, eh. You're a cynic. Sid Moore called while you were on the air. He wants you to come right up to Carlton's office. Carlton's office? You're moving in pretty exalted circles these days. Carlton's office, eh? That's what the man said. Put in a good word with the great white father. Carlton's office, what do you know? Simple, but...